Hey, Jen. Hey, Colin. How are you? Good, how are you? So, Jen, I was wondering, how do you feel about the overall arc of the uh, of Once Upon a Time and Hook? <laughs> I think that Emma really loves Hook. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. End of story. Sorry. Next question, please. <laughs> you know, though, you tell us, I mean, clearly things are very different for your characters next season. What can you tell us about how Hook is maybe going to adapt to the news of Emma going dark? I think it's it's really difficult for Hook because he spent most of the last season trying to protect her from the darkness because he understood what that meant. Uh, now, not quite as dark as being the dark one, but certainly he was trying to, to protect her heart. And I think he look, might be more into her wardrobe. Well. I mean, I think he'll definitely <laughs> prefer the wardrobe, but definitely. He'll probably even borrow her pants. Um, I think... Uh, for him, it's a case of he's a, he he is fully invested in this relationship and being in love with Emma, and I think that he'll do whatever it takes to to, to try and bring back the woman that he, he sort of loves. Even though, in the same way that Belle loves Rumpel, even for the darkness that's in him, it's going to be like that with Hook, and it's about trying to figure out a way of bringing Emma back, or whether or not he can do that, and, or whether or not he'll decide to go back to the darkness, you know, and that's where the, that's where his struggle is going to be, I think. Uh, Jennifer, for you, how's it been playing the uh, Dark Swan? It's well? great. I mean, I, it's it's so wonderful to have a challenge like this going into season five of a show to feel like I'm building something entirely new. It's obviously informed by everything that Emma's gone through, but it really is entirely new, and so. Um, been a lot of new research and new thought processes and lots and lots of conversations with Eddie and Adam and Eduardo, the costume designer, and, you know, I mean, everyone, I feel like all, everyone in the crew is involved in this process because everything she touches is different, everything she wears is different, everything she handles is different, you know, so, um, and there's, there's a different energy to it, you know, I mean, I, the first couple days of doing it, I was like, so exhausted, <laughs> because, you know, when you get angry or angsty in real life, it happens in a second, and it's, you know, it, it, it comes out and then it's over, but when you're angry as a character, Character for 16 hours a day, you have to sustain that level of angst and anger for 16 hours. And so the next morning you wake up and you go, God, I didn't know I had those muscles. <laughs> I didn't know that I was like, you know, carrying this tension for all these hours. But um, it's the most rewarding exhaustion. There's nothing more fun as an actor than to feel like you're exhausted for all the right reasons. So I'm really enjoying it. The tagline for the season is evil is made, not born. Yeah. So as both as human beings, not, not as a character, do you think it's that true? I do. I mean, I, I, I mean that's kind of the question we were just asked over there. I, I, just, I think so. Uh, I think it really is your circumstances. I mean, yeah. I can't think of an example of someone that I... Unless somebody's just born with no empathy but then that's yeah, a psychological I guess, that's, I guess that's if someone's born a sociopath I guess that's you know what different. I mean then you um, then well, but the, the question is is that evil or is that is that just a brain is that like a, synapse issue yeah um, <laughs> I mean tell me Jennifer how do you feel about this <laughs> brain synapse issues etc well, that's, that's one of those questions it's kind of like it's a difficult question to answer because you know I think what the show has done really well is that you know the darkness is there Emma has to choose to take the darkness on board Rumpel had to choose to take the darkness on board. Now, it's whether or not you embrace it or you fight against it. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and they do establish, too, with all of the dark ones in the past, which they kind of go back through in the beginning of the season this year, um, everyone takes the darkness for a good reason. Mm. Like, Rumpel took it because he wanted to try to be braver for his son, and Emma took it because she's saving the, the whole town from being destroyed by the darkness. And before that, they go through the earlier, some of the, they mention some of the earlier dark ones, and, the, and there are good reasons for choosing the darkness. So I think there's something really interesting about this idea that people make bad decisions for good reasons sometimes, and how far um, down the rabbit hole you can end up for having made a bad decision, but for a good reason. Um, and I think that that happens in life. So there's, there's like an incredible sort of life lesson in the way that they're telling these stories and, and looking at it going, wow, you can pull the thread and think, oh, it's just this one time or I'm only doing it because I need to protect so-and-so. Or it's okay to take this thing because I need it for blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, 
so easy to justify something small and you don't know the domino effect of how far that that, that can take you in life. And so in that perspective, I do think that um, darkness or evil or bad decisions are coming from something that's circumstantial or made, not something that is born. This is why I like doing interviews with Jen. <laughs> she's got all the answers. It's absolutely brilliant. You started that one. Though. I know. You started that one really hard. It was good. Thank you so much.